Hello, I am the caretaker, host of the Graveyard Show podcast, and welcome to my catacombs of horror. In this edition, I thought I would feature one of my favorite, well, vampire movies, as well as one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I'm talking about Count Yorga Vampire. Now, some of you may know the movie under its original title, which was called The Loves of Count Yorga. And uh, Yorga was spelled uh, I-O-R-G-A. Um, now, depending on where you see the movie, uh, whether it's on DVD or streaming anywhere, or maybe just on TV somewhere, uh, you may see it in the original title uh, card, or you may see it in the um, revamped title, which was called Count Yorga Vampire, uh, Yorga being spelled with a Y. Now, I want to talk about a couple of my favorite scenes from the film, but before I do that, I want to give a little bit of backstory on the film. And then uh, I'm going to get into uh, the movie itself. And obviously, um, I'm going to be giving away spoilers. So if you have not seen this film and you're planning on doing so, uh, you should probably turn around now and exit my catacombs. Uh, But uh, if you're good with that, or if you've seen it, or you just really don't care, uh, well, follow me as we move further on down my catacombs of horror. Now, the film was originally supposed to be a softcore porn movie, and that immediately went out the door once uh, Robert Quarry was hired to play uh, the character of Count Yorga. Uh, Quarry, of course, was established a legitimate Hollywood actor, and there was no way that this movie was going to be some sort of so- softcore uh, porn film. So uh, it had to change, and they turned it into a B horror film. Now, um, I really like this movie, and I always uh, recommend it whenever I can to um, to friends of mine, uh, because I think uh, this is just one of those movies. When I was a kid, uh, I saw it quite a bit. It was it played a lot on uh, Channel Five in New York and in New Jersey back in the day. This uh, uh, the Blackula Scream, Blackula Scream. Those are some of the movies that were uh, featured on Channel Five uh, back in the uh, well in the Stone Ages. Uh, now, one of the other great things was that uh, one of the co-stars in the movie, well, there were really two that had uh, very good careers, uh, the first being Roger Perry, who some of you that are fans of the original Star Trek uh, series uh, may recognize him from that. And then, of course, there's Michael Murphy, who's been in everything, uh, from Woody Allen's Manhattan to uh, Batman Returns. Uh, he's just been uh, everywhere. So um, you have that on top of having Robert Quarry uh, in the film. Now, Quarry, to to me, and I think a lot of horror fans agree, his Count Yorga is one of the uh, most underrated and one of the best vampires in cinema. Uh, for me, I put him right up there with Christopher Lee as Dracula, Lugosi as Dracula. Um, Robert Quarry in this movie uh, and in the sequel, uh, The Return of Count Yorga, uh, is really, I mean, he has a presence and such a great arrogance about him um, that I, I don't know if we've really seen this. Uh, from a lot of actors in vampire movies. Uh, the way Quarry moves in the movie and just the way he looks at people, um, you definitely feel an aristocracy about him as well as this this incredible arrogance that everyone is just beneath him. Um, so let's get into um, let's get into the actual movie itself before I get to my favorite scenes in the movie. So the story of Count Yorga Vampire is, uh, well, it's one that we've heard so many times before. Uh, Aged Count uh, comes to America, ends up in Los Angeles uh, with his manservant, Bruda, uh, buys a mansion in the hills of Hollywood, uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And, um, you know, he's in search of love and someone to feast on (laughs) in the City of Angels. So uh, when our movie begins, uh, there is a seance happening. And we are introduced to our um, our characters, um, one of which is Donna. Uh, Donna has requested this seance because her mother recently passed away. Now, running the seance is, of course, Count Yorga, vampire. But no one knows he's a vampire. And ironically enough, um, the reason why Donna's mother's really dead is because, well, she's now a vampire, uh, thanks to Count Yorga. 
Be that as it may, uh, the seance uh, goes badly because her friends just act like jerks. Um, nothing really happens uh, for a bit. And then um, as uh, Donna is um, calling out to her mother in the middle of the seance, uh, things just go crazy. Donna passes out, and Count Yorga takes that moment to revive her and um, has her forget the previous uh, events as to not traumatize her. But of course, what he's really doing... You will do everything I say, whenever and from wherever I say it. You will do everything I say, whenever and from wherever I say it. When Donna is revived, she has no recollection of the last few minutes. Um, It's as if nothing has happened. She thanks the Count, and of course the Count is like, I have to go now. Uh, And this um, leads the Count to have one of the best lines (laughs) in the movie. I believe I brought a cape. I'll get it for you. Of course he does. He's a vampire, of course. Now, um, Erica re-enters, asks uh, the Count if he's staying. He says no. She says, do you want a ride? He's like, of course. So uh, Erica and her boyfriend, Paul, wind up giving the Count a lift back to his mansion in their VW wagon, which, of course, is a very cool car. Uh, They uh, get thanked for their troubles by uh, having their car purposely uh, stuck in uh, this giant mud um, pit in the middle of the road. And, of course, it being 1973, uh, the young ones are like, hey, let's just hang out in the VW uh, van. We'll have sex. We'll sleep off the night. And in the morning, we'll be on our way. Well, of course, well, the sex part happens. But uh, unbeknownst to them, the Count has lined them up to be his victims. At least Erica is going to be his victim. Uh, The Count um, attacks them inside the van, uh, subdues Paul, bites Erica, and there you have it. Next morning, Erica finds herself in Dr. Hayes' office uh, for lack of blood and um, weakness and not feeling well. Of course, she'd just been uh, attacked by a vampire. Dr. Hayes tells her to make sure she eats plenty of steaks so she can get uh, her strength back and get some blood going. Um, And of course, what ends up happening is uh, she ends up eating the cat. Now, what I always remember about this scene is that whenever it played on uh, on, uh, TV... Uh, back in the day, uh, once it came up to this point right here, you would that would be it. <laughs> I didn't see this full scene until probably about, I don't know, 20 years ago or so, 30 years ago, I guess, um, uh, when, uh, when it was on on DVD. And, uh, you know, you kind of forget you f- when you see these movies on TV when you're, when you're younger, uh, back in the early days of cable, uh, you just kind of forget how chopped up they were and you just kind of remember them like that. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty, this is a pretty grotesque scene, even, even by today's standards, I think. Um, and it's really well done. So meanwhile, Erica winds up getting a tr- blood transfusion from Paul. Uh, Dr. Hayes, uh, brings, um, Paul and Donna's boyfriend, Michael, downstairs. Well, uh, Dr. Hayes brings them downstairs to talk to them about something. Um, He spoke to one of his colleagues. And, um, well, here's what the colleague had to say. A colleague of mine, Dr. Steingart, ran a blood test in America this afternoon. Now, he admits that his findings are pure conjecture. But when I told him about the marks on her throat, it made him feel all the more certain. Of what? Well, I wish he was here with us, but he left for Europe for two months. Jim, what are you trying to say? Well, he feels that Erica was bitten by a vampire. A vampire? I mean, uh... Well, he, he told me not to discount the possibilities. Oh, come on, Jim. <laughs> now, of course, in a vampire movie, 
at least in the Dracula films, you always have the older, uh, experienced vampire hunter, right? And most notably, there's always the Van Helsing character in all the Dracula films, whether it's the Lugosi Dracula, the Lee, uh, the Gary Oldman Dracula. Um, you, there is a Van Helsing who's there to guide the younger people uh, in, in this world of good versus evil. Well, what's interesting about this film, and I think it's one of the reasons why I like it, is that the, the Van Helsing character in this movie... Really, it doesn't exist. He's there in a moment, and he's now in Europe. So now you have all these young people who are just kind of not really buying the idea of vampires, right? Um, and this doctor who kind of believes, and maybe not, and he's not really sure. Well, what this leads me to are my favorite scenes in the film, which I'm getting to now. Uh, well, of course, Erica goes missing, and now uh, Paul ends up going to find her at Yorga's uh, mansion, where he is subsequently killed. Uh, Yorga disposes of Paul, and Bruda, well, Bruda goes bane on, uh, on, on Paul. <coughs> Bruder, you can expect more guests. With Paul out of the way, Dr. Hayes, Michael, and Donna are now on the search, and they uh, end up in Yorga's mansion, where Dr. Hayes wants to test his theory that if Yorga really is a vampire, then he has to be in his coffin by sunrise. So they have this conversation back and forth, and Hayes and um, Michael are doing their best to keep Yorga up by talking to him just kind of about just nothing, right? And Hayes is doing his best to keep the count occupied. And I love this one moment here where Hayes says this. You said you were involved in the mystic arts. Did I? I recall you're having asked. I don't remember having answered. It's so good. Yorga is just so on. And I love it because this is the kind of stuff that you normally don't get in, in vampire movies. I mean... You know, we're used to, uh, people of my generation, we're used to seeing, you know, the Bela Lugosi, uh, Dracula, and in the Christopher Lee Dracula films where you didn't have this kind of interaction. And here you have the Doctor and, and the Count uh, kind of going back and forth here a little bit. And, of course, uh, Dr. Hayes has the advantage because, well, time's on his side in this instance, right? Normally, time would be on the vampire side, but the sun is rising and Hayes is doing everything he can to test his theory. Meanwhile, Yorga's had enough, and he's saying goodnight to everybody. And just as Yorga is stepping away, Hayes drops the bomb. Is it true that vampires must be in their resting places before the sun rises? That if the rays of the sun hit them, they will disintegrate? I mean, how great is this? Watching Quarry just kind of take it all in. And right here, you know... He is going to kill this guy, for that question and he is going to make it meet. painful and just and you bad. you be very comfortable in knowing, Dr. Hayes. We shall most definitely meet again. Bruda. Donna ends up going to Yorga's mansion during the day, where Bruda ends up raping her, which is just despicable. Bruda fesses up. Uh, Yorga gives him the look of doom. But just as you're not sure whether or not he's going to rip his heart out, he hears something. Well, of course, it's our doctor and Michael. They've arrived at the house to take care of Count Yorga and get Donna back. And this is what leads me to one of my two favorite scenes in this film. We have visitors. As Michael infiltrates the house and the doctor's doing, well, I'm not really sure what the doctor's trying to do here. <laughs> he's just trying to do something. Uh, well, who shows up? Hey, everybody, it's Count Yorga. Now, I don't know, um, but uh, if I was him, uh, I wouldn't be uh, doing anything other than turning tail and getting the hell out of there, and Michael, <laughs> Michael's on his own. <laughs> Sorry, man, your girlfriend, good luck. <laughs> um, as opposed to um, willingly uh, walk into uh, the mansion of a vampire who is probably going to fucking kill you. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Dr. Hayes willingly goes in there. And what I love is, as they're sitting there, just how 
arrogant and confident Count Yorga is. He just doesn't care because he knows he's in control tonight. He knows that this is his night and that this guy doesn't stand a chance. And of course, what does he do? He says, On what subject did we end? Vampire. (laughs) Knowing damn well what subject they ended on. Yes. I just love Robert Corey's reactions. He just he's so masterful in this scene. He's just sitting there and is just confident and just playing with him. Oh, let me take a look at this steak that you've brought here to drive through my heart. And he and he's just like, Yeah, hey doc, can I have that? And the doctor's like, um, Sure. Here. I, mean, I, told last night I mean, what else is he going to do, I guess, at this point, right? He's trying to play it cool and hoping, of course, that Yorga really isn't a vampire, but he knows he is. Um, and I just love how, I mean, he's just holding on to this and just kind of playing with it. He's, he's a cat playing with the mouse. It's just so good here. And how he just makes his point by, well, pointing at him, right? It's just so good, this this back and forth that, well, it's not even a back and forth. It's just this cool, calm moment here that, especially in today's movies, you wouldn't see this in today's movies. It would just be some sort of crazy fight CG thing. And meanwhile, York is just staring at him and asks him the question he didn't want to hear. Would you care now to see that which you hope not to see? So, of course, he leads him into the basement where the vampire women are. And I've always wondered right here what the point is. Is he thinking about how he's setting his trap and how this is just too easy? Or is he wondering what this doctor is going to think about seeing this? Is he just impressed with how easy this is? Or maybe how proud he is to show the doctor the work that he's done by making these women vampires and under his command. And then, this is my favorite part in the whole movie. Do you find it interesting, doctor? Where's Donna and Paul? Donna is upstairs. Paul is dead. We shall never see either of them again. And now he's coming in for the kill. You enjoyed your little joke last night, Doctor. But as you can see, tonight is mine. Colonel, you you really are a vampire? Yes. Normally, right? You would have the vampire hissing and running. But no, not here. Yorga turns, and as he turns his gaze back on Dr. Hayes... He's got his fangs. They used to show this in the commercial when they used to promo the movie. He's just toying with him. It's just so, it's just so great. He's laughing. He's having a good time. He's calling Michael's name out too. Like, like he's not going to help you. And meanwhile, of course, you know. Dr. Hayes is crap in his pants. Well, who would, right? Unbeknownst to him, of course, Yorga doesn't need to lift a finger because he's got Dr. Hayes so distracted, he's not going to see what's coming up from behind. And of course, that's the end of Dr. Hayes. The soundtrack to this film, too, is really unique. And now here's your Van Helsing character, who normally would be doing battle with the vampire. Well, he's just been easily destroyed right here. He's just been easily killed. And that's it. You know, and I think the other thing about this movie that I really enjoy, too, is that it's it's sort of like they're just average people who are just doing their thing. You know, it's not a vampire movie, per se. 
it's people who are just kind of like, what do you mean he's a vampire? They don't believe it. They're kind of, they're not really a good at fighting the vampire. It's just kind of all hit or miss. And most of the times it's miss. And I think that's what I enjoy about it is that it's not a clean vampire movie where people don't believe that there's a vampire. They arm themselves and then all of a sudden they're vampire hunters. And I think, you know, this would be more of a realistic vampire story if it were to happen in reality, I think would be uh, my take on this. Um, and then, of course, the movie uh, concludes from there, which I'm not going to get into because I've just shown the sequences that are my favorite in the film, and that's where I'm going to end this. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, please feel free to leave comments in the comments section below. Would love to hear your thoughts about Count Yorga. Did you like it? Did you not like the film? Do you agree with these scenes? And um, in the meantime, you can also find uh, the other episode of Catacombs of Horror, uh, which is about uh, what best represents 1980s horror. And uh, the director of the 80s horror documentary films In Search of Darkness, Parts 1 and Parts 2, and soon to be Part 3, David Weiner joins me and he and I bounce back and forth on four topics and we both pick what we think best represents 1980s horror in those categories. So uh, check that out and again I'd love to get your comments on that as well. You can also join me inside the graveyard on the Graveyard Show podcast which you can find right here on YouTube as well as everywhere podcasts exist and if you are a part of the slasher community you can follow the show there at the handle at Graveyard Show Podcast. Thank you for joining me inside my catacombs of horror. I look forward to seeing you again very soon.